when authority is delegated to you, it is communicated to you. Those of us that are in industry and we're in management, we communicate, we have appointed you to this place. These and these are your these, the functions, these and these are the resources, this is what you can do, this is what you can do. That's the authority. Amen. So it is also communicated to us in scripture, and that's what we're seeing. It's also in Mark 16, which we have looked at. But I want us to look at Luke chapter 22, verse 29. Authority is delegated unto us. Jesus delegated that authority. Look at verse 29. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me. Can anyone be clearer than that? Mm -hmm. I appoint unto you a kingdom, even as my Father has appointed unto me. And then look at John chapter 17. John chapter 17. Verse 18. The Bible says, And as thou hast sent me into the world, he's speaking to the Father now, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Look at what Jesus Christ is saying in this place. He's not requesting from the Father to grant him authority to send them into the world. Let us understand it. He said, as thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. He's saying, because you've given me authority to act, I am delegating the authority to them. He does, when you have authority, let, let, let me tell you this uh, quickly. In industry, if you have authority to act, and you keep going back to your boss, you're showing incompetence. And sooner or later, you'll be relieved of your position. What we desire, I have been in management and I've communicated this to you on many occasions. When you give somebody authority, you expect him to be acting. Uh, I remember um, in the bank many years ago, uh, I began to, there, there are a few things that happened, but I'll just share a few of them with you. Um, some of my profession, I mean, some of my colleagues in the bank, of course, they were, I think they were envious of my boldness, even though they had been in the bank long before I joined them, but we were on the same level. I think they were envious of my boldness. I was uh, spending outside the budget, you know, every year we would prepare budget of what will be spent and what it will be, you know, what it's going to be for. So they saw me spending outside the budget. Whatever. Uh, was right to do, I will just do it, whether it's in the budget or not. All right? If it's in the budget, fine. If it's not in the budget, and I still feel it is okay and it's right to do it, I will do it. So they went to the president of the bank and reported me that, what is the matter with this man? He's just spending and he's spending outside the budget. And the man called me, who is the president, said, why are you, you know, making expenditures outside of the budget? And I simply told him that, ah, if, if you appoint me as a unit head, a profit center to generate profit for the bank, and I know that certain things that are to be done, even though it's not budgeted, that will enhance the profitability of the business, should I not do it? I believe that I should have the right to use my discretion to do it. You know what the man told me? Just go, leave them alone, don't mind them. Go and be doing your work. Mm -hmm. Then another time, they told him that this man does not report for duty at 8 o'clock. The time for, uh, 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 the time of work is 8 to 5. He does not report at 8 every time he comes late. So the man called me again and said, look, why is it, you know, do you know that official time begins at 8 and all that? And I said, is that why you call me? He said, yes. I said, how do you know what I'm doing? Supposing I have a very important meeting to hold before I get to the office. Do you want me to come to the office at 8 o'clock and then go and miss that uh, appointment? I said, look, I mean, you know my position and you know what you have committed into my hand and I'm doing what I need to do. Uh, but I can start working before getting to the, to, the, to the bank. I can. I may have scheduled a meeting very early in the morning that, I may, that may prevent me from coming to the bank at 8 o'clock. He said, go, don't listen to them. 
<laughs> you see these things. So these are the things, you know, that, that we need to understand. I was using my discretion. But these people thought, well, it is by a rigid adherence to the rule that they win. In the end, they lost. You see the point? So Christ did not go back. Supposing I, I start going to the man, oh, uh, excuse me, I won't be able to come to you. Uh, uh, the office at 8 o'clock tomorrow. I have a meeting at uh, so so place. And then another day, I won't be able to be at it. The man will get that. Say, what is the matter with you? Didn't I give you authority? Do what is right that you need to do. Jesus knew that it was right to send the people out. And he said, as you have sent me, mm -hmm. so I have sent them. So he's announcing to the Father what he has done in the Father's name. Praise the Lord. Because he had the authority. Amen. So we have been saying in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at John 20, 21. Authority has been delegated to us and we can go and do what the Lord wants us to do. Verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, even so said I you. That's your authority. You carry all the authority of Jesus Christ. As all the Authority that God Almighty invested in Jesus Christ. I mean, invested in Jesus Christ. Every authority that He invested in Jesus Christ is also invested in you now. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Authority can also be acquired by conquest. Authority can be acquired by conquest. Let us go to John chapter 16, verse 33. Authority can be acquired by conquest. Verse 33, the Bible says, These things are spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I have conquered the world. So because I have conquered the world, I have authority over the world. Yeah. Authority can be acquired by contest, praise God, by conquest. Praise. praise the Lord. Amen. Look at Colossians chapter 2. Jesus has overcome the world, therefore the authority is in his hand. You see that what we're doing, we first of all see the uh, authority from the point of Christ, from the point of view of Christ, mm -hmm. and now how he came to us, so that we can know that we have legitimate authority. If we can trace our authority back to Christ, it is legitimate. Mm -hmm. If we cannot trace our authority back to Christ in anything, it is not legitimate. We see that we can treat, trace our authority back to Christ by ownership. We can trace our authority back to uh, uh, Christ uh, 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 through uh, our back. We can take, trace our uh, uh, authority back to Christ through delegation. So we are, we are covered. Look at Colossians chapter 2 and we look at uh, verse 13. Look at verse 13. The Bible says, And you, being dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh, I think quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing to the cross. And having spoiled principalities, that is the conquest, having spoiled his principalities and powers, mm -hmm. he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Praise the Lord. So that is conquest, authority by conquest. Look at Psalm 68. Psalm 68, verse 18, authority by conquest. Jesus conquered, Jesus overcame. He destroyed the one that has the power of, of, of death over people. Therefore, he conquered as it were the devil. There was war in heaven, amen? The dragon fought with his angel. Remember the scripture? And then the angels also fought and they overcame it by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And because of that, they were able to cast him out. Authority by conquest. Authority by conquest. Look at verse 18. Thou hast ascended on high. Thou hast led captivity captive. Thou hast received gifts for men. Yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. God, I mean Jesus Christ, has led captivity, has dismantled every uh, 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 work of the devil. To lead captivity captive means that he has demolished the one that has held people captive. 
He has defeated the one that most people captive. Because of that, he is able to release them. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. It's the same thing there. Amen. It is the same thing. Jesus has conquered. He's the winner. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. And he gave some apostles. Why? Because he has conquered. He can now appoint. He can now appoint administrators, as it were. He gives some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, I mean, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Praise the Lord. Amen. First John chapter 4, verse 4. How did it come to you? Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome death. You also, you have conquered. You also, you have conquered. Jesus overcame them. You have overcome them. Whatever Jesus overcame, you overcame. Praise the Lord. Amen. So he conquered and you conquered in him. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the in the world. Look at verse five, chapter 5 and look at verse 4. Chapter 5 of 4 John. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. You conquer by your birth. <laughs> by reason of your birth, you have conquered. For whatever is born of God, for whoever is born of God overcometh the world. Are you born of God? Yes. So you have overcome the world. Praise the Lord. Because we are born of an overcomer. Praise the Lord. When a king overcomes a region and is ruling in the kingdom, in, the, in that kingdom, the son of that king is also a ruler. He cannot be a captive. Glory be to God. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Yes. Then you have overcome the world. Yes. And if you have overcome the world, you have overcome the ruler of this world. Who is the devil? Praise the Lord. Lastly, authority can also be derived from skill. From skill, personal endowment, and service. Praise the Lord. From skill, look at Psalm 45. Skill, ability, disposition, authority can flow from your skill. Those of you that you are diligent in the service of the Lord, authority flows for you because of what you do. Praise the Lord. You love the Lord, authority flows for you because of that. It flows to you. Look at Psalm 45. Psalm 45. I will read verse 6. The Bible says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is the right scepter. Thou lovest righteousness and uh, hated wickedness. Therefore, God thy God hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. You see, he said, because you love righteousness and you hate wickedness, that is the disposition. Therefore, what did God do? A stamp of authority through the anointing. Praise the Lord. Amen. You see that? So as you are walking in righteousness, loving the things of God, serving God, God releases authority for you to, to continue to move. Why? Because you love righteousness and you hate wickedness. This is the reason God has released that authority. That was released on Jesus Christ. And it's also for those who believe. Glory be to God. Look at Psalm 89. Look at Psalm 89. Authority comes. Authority is released through the exercise of skill, uh, personal endowment, service unto the Lord. This authority is also released. Look at Psalm 89, verse 20. The Bible says, 
I have found David my servant with my holy oil, I have anointed him, just as Christ was anointed. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. Amen. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. Why? God is saying, I put him in a position of authority because I can see his heart is with me. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. I can see that his heart is devoted to what, what, what to my desire. So I give him authority. Do you not know that this is done in companies? The president of the company is looking at all the staff and is looking at what at this person. He's working for the success of this business more than others. I'm going to make him a manager. I'm going to make him a divisional head. Give him higher authority because of his behavior. So people of God, I know that you diligently, you know, serve the Lord. Understand that authority flows for you. It flows to you as you do. Authority flows to you as you do. Understand this. Said the enemy shall not exact upon him. And the sons of wickedness, not the sons of wickedness, afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face. Look at what God does when you are, when your desire is for the things of God, and you love God, and you love His things, and you diligently serve. Not only does He give you authority, He practically begins to make sure that every opposition is demolished before you. Praise the Lord. So the, you see, to serve God and to 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 love God. And to do the will of God is, 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 is very important. It is a powerful uh, means by which we can walk in this authority. Look at all the things that are added. He said, but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. The horn being exalted means that I will place him high. And wherever God places you, authority flows with that place. Praise the Lord. I will lift him high. I will set his hand also in the sea. Look at the territory. I will enlarge the sphere of his influence. I will enlarge the spheres of, of, of his authority. I will set his heart in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him my firstborn. Look at that. Amen. He's now talking again of Jesus Christ. You see, when the Bible is talking, even about someone is say is, is showing a type of Christ, amen. It is revealing. He's talking about. He's talking about Christ. And when he sees the traces of a type of Christ, he begins to put the, the thing together. Say, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand for Augustine. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. Look at what comes when we, we joyfully and, you know, passionately love God and serve Him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Coming to true Bessalel is the authority to do because of the skill that God gave, God gave to him. In Exodus chapter 35, from verse 30 to 35, is the same thing. Amen. It's the same thing. The skill of Bessalel gave him authority to do everything that was in the temple. Amen. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 3. It's important for us to know these things. The distinction between authority and power and how authority has been passed down to us that we may be able to lift up our heads and know that we have authority to act. Every one of us, we have authority to act in the name of Jesus, and once we act, it has to be established. Glory be to God. Zechariah chapter 3, I will read verse 7. The Bible says, Thus said the Lord God of the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt also judge my house. If you walk in my ways, if you do my will, I will give you authority to judge my house, to be ruler over my house. So, you know, a pastor that continues to do the will of God will continue to advance in authority before God. Amen. I will then will with that thou also judge my house and shall also keep my course and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. I will promote you. See, so your service to the Lord is not in vain. 
Keep on serving diligently, loving him, and using what you've got to, 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 to do his will. You will see that this is what happens. He will promote you. Every promotion, with every promotion comes a higher authority. We know it in the natural. It's the same in the spiritual. With every promotion comes a higher authority. Praise the Lord. A manager cannot be acting like a supervisor. Why? Because his authority is greater than the authority of a supervisor. Amen. Matthew 19, chapter 28. Matthew 19, chapter 28. Look at the word of God. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, you have followed me, you have been diligent, you have served me, what will I do even when I come in the regeneration? When the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And we promote you and give you a higher authority, even in eternity. Praise the Lord. You know, I told you, all of us will not be on the same level when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. He will reward everyone according to what he has done in the flesh. There are some that will be on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Praise the Lord. Where do you want to be? You want a greater authority? Devote yourself unto the Lord. I want us to rise up and pray. Now you know you have authority. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Which is greater, authority or power? Authority. Ah, what is authority? The power to act. The power to act. The right to act. Right Amen. The right to act, the right to do. Praise the Lord. You have the right to act, you have the right to do. Amen. Glory be to God. I want you to use that right. Amen. Use that right. And come against everything ungodly that may come into your mind or that the spirit may bring into your mind. Whether it is in your home, whether it is in your body, whether it is in your finance, whether it is in your community, whether it is in the nation. Use that authority because your authority is over a territory. Amen. And he said, you shall be witnesses unto me, beginning in Jerusalem, then to all Judea, to all Samaria, and to the utmost end of the earth. So your authority can be exercised over all the world. Yes. Praise the Lord. So your authority can be exercised over all the world. So that whatever the Spirit brings into your heart, begin to decree against it. You have authority. The authority is in the name of Jesus. He said, ah, the devils bow down to us in your name, in your name. Jesus is the one that has the authority. Jesus is the one who is the king. He's the one who is the ruler. He's the one who is the legitimate owner and therefore can do whatever he has with his own. He's the son of the living God, the heir, and the one who possesses all inheritance. The Bible says that it has pleased the Lord, the Father, that all fullness should dwell in him. So nobody can contest that. And then it is also delegated unto him. Say, my father has appointed unto me a kingdom. Say, I appoint unto you a kingdom, even as my father has appointed unto you. So these are these things. And we also know that this authority is also by conquest. He conquered, he destroyed all the work of the devil. First John chapter 3, verse 8. The reason the Son of God came is to destroy the work of the devil. He said, ye have overcome them. Because the one who is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. We have overcome. We have overcome. We have overcome. What is it that overcomes the world? Even your faith. He who believes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has overcome the world. And you believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Therefore, you have overcome. You have won by conquest. And therefore, you can have authority over the area of conquest. And that is over all the works of evil. In the name of Jesus, is delegated unto you that authority. Said, Behold, I see Satan as lightning like lightning fall from heaven. I give you authority. I give you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. So you can trample on anything 
that is of the devil around and nothing can, can, can harm you. That is the word of God. Father, we bless your name. We give you all the praise. We come against every sickness, every satanic ploy, every evil thing, oh Lord God, that the enemy has been using against the children of God. We come out of those things destroyed. Let the sick be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the insane be made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we come against depression, emotional disturbances, mental disturbances. Lord God, every sickness, Alzheimer's, cancer, in the name of Jesus, we cause them. And the mighty name of Jesus, by the authority that is the name of Jesus, we command these things to vanish in Jesus' name. Lord, we speak to everybody, oh Lord of your children, to be quickened by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ. That my Lord and my God, they receive fresh unction, fresh anointing. Anyone around at the sound of my voice that needs healing, receive your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. That the authority that is of the name of Jesus release your healing for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone in bondage be set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone confused in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, know and understand. Know and understand. Know and understand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I come against the spirit of poverty in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I banish it from your life in Jesus' name. I command death lifted in the mighty name of Jesus. Each and every one of you shall prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. I call forth to your, to your children, their spouses, in the mighty name of Jesus. I, I speak against every delay. I speak against every scheme of the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. All the children that, that, that are married shall be fruitful, they shall multiply in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We shall receive grandchildren, grandchildren, grandchildren right now in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, all the spouses that are for your children, they will come for to them in the name of Jesus Christ. No one will take a wrong partner in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. All barriers are lifted because the gates have been lifted, the ancient doors have been lifted, the King of glory is stepping in, ruling, the glory of God shall be seen over our children, the glory of God shall be seen in our homes, in the lives of our spouses, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Our businesses shall prosper in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Authority to prosper, authority to increase in Jesus' name. If there be anyone a uh, waiting war, if there be anything attacking the progress of gospel, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command those things destroyed in Jesus' name. Liberty now, freedom now, in the name of Jesus Christ. Prosperity now, the door that has been shut against blessings are opened in the name of Jesus Christ. The doors that have been shut against blessings are open in the name of Jesus Christ. By the power and the authority that is in that name, you go forth and prosper. Go and live in divine health in the name of Jesus Christ. Go forth and begin to set the captives free in the name of Jesus Christ. With the authority of Jesus that has been given unto you, go and set the captives free in the name of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, the devil shall bow to you. Sickness shall bow to you. Affliction shall bow for, to you. Plagues shall bow to you in the name of Jesus Christ. At your word, there shall be restoration. At your word, there shall be deliverance. At your word, there shall be salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The name of the Lord shall be glorified in the name of Jesus. As the Father has sent our Lord Jesus, he has sent you with the same authority, with the same power, with the same grace, you will not fail in the name of Jesus Christ. You are a king, you are a priest, and it is written that you should reign on this earth. You continue to reign, walk in dominion. Nothing shall dominate you in the name of Jesus Christ. You are in dominion from now on. Because you are in dominion, the wicked shall bow before you. Amen. The evil shall bow before you. The wicked shall bow before you again in the name of Jesus Christ. The rod of the wicked is lifted off of your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every force of evil that is attacking your fortune, 
by now in the name of Jesus, they cease forever Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. If there be any storm that has been arrayed against you in the mighty name of Jesus, I command the storm to cease Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You walk in the peace of the Lord. Amen. You walk in the joy of the Lord. Amen. You walk in the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You are delivered from immorality Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You are delivered from sin Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. You are delivered from unrighteousness in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You shall love righteousness. Amen. You shall love holiness. Amen. You shall love the Lord your God. Amen. You shall serve him Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Your authority no one can take away from you. Amen. I command you act in that authority Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 